Hi, and welcome to the sixth video in aerodynamics. Last time, we learned all about the conservation laws and their physical roots and features. This included conservation of mass. If more mass flows into a cube than comes out, the mass of the cube must change. Conservation of momentum, that a fluid's acceleration must be due to a force. And conservation of energy that states if work or heat is added or taken from a system, the internal energy must change. Today we're going to zoom out and start to consider how we might visualize a flow field through properties that can be calculated from the equations, but also recreated in real life. We will go over the differences between path lines, streak lines, and streamlines and how we might calculate the field of streamlines using something called the stream function. Okay, let's jump in. We already know how to describe the flow with complex equations. At some point in a flow, we might be able to say the pressure and velocity near a surface. But engineers are often visual, and it helps to be able to see what's going on. So, we have developed a number of techniques to visualize the flow also known as flow viz. This helps us diagnose possible flow problems or glean out interesting flow features. For example, flow viz tells us where flow is separated, which could lead to a loss in aerodynamic performance, where flow is turbulent, causing higher shear stress at the wall and possible drag, or recirculating. Maybe there's a pesky separation bubble you'd like to get rid of. All of these can be visualized in a flow setting. To visualize the flow, what we do is draw a set of lines representing the flow behavior. You've actually seen it many times in the videos that led up to this one. Typically, I'll draw an airfoil and then some blue lines that represent the flow over it. These blue lines represent the flow paths, where if a particle starts at one place on the line, it will end up someplace down that line. There are a number of lines to represent the flow. These are called path lines, stream lines, and streak lines. Let's compare the three and determine which we might find most useful in a flow situation. First, we have path lines. Consider a flow in three dimensions that also varies in time, so it's an unsteady three-dimensional flow. Now, we take a small probe that has the ability to inject a small particle that we can see clearly and follow at any point in time. We inject a particle and it follows a path that's represented by the red dashed line. If we inject another particle at a later time, we get a different particle path. And a third particle gives us a third path. These are the particle path lines, which represent the path of a particle that, at one point in time, passed through point A, representing the probe location. If you're familiar with photography, these can be recreated by doing long exposure photographs. Let's say we light up a bunch of particles in a flow, open our camera shutter, take a long exposed picture, and then close our shutter again. The particles will trace out their respective paths and you will capture that until the shutter closes. Then you would have an image representing the path lines. Next we have the streak lines. Say we have the same flow from before that is three dimensional and unsteady. And we stick a particle injector into this flow. But this time, instead of injecting one particle and watching that particle's path, we rapidly inject a series of particles. After a while, the series of particles appear to make up a curve in the flow. At any given instant, this curve that connects the series of particles is called a streak line. Officially, the streak line is defined as the line created by a continuous series of particles that pass through point A at some time. Say you had a camera and you have some flow where you've injected a series of particles that you can see. You take your first quick exposure snapshot, which represents the line of dots in red. You take a second snapshot sometime later, which represents a line of dots in blue. Notice that the dots change position between pictures. 
The curves that make up the red and blue lines are both separate streak lines. However, if you connected the dots of the red with their respective dots of blue, here represented by the green lines, these would be considered a set of path lines because they follow the individual particles in time. Now, we move on to the most famous of the three, the streamline. Streamlines are more mathematically defined than the other two line types. Consider a fluid flow field, unsteady and three-dimensional like before. A streamline is a curve that, roughly speaking, smoothly connects the velocity vectors at an instant in time. The true definition of a streamline is a curve in space whose tangent at any point along the curve is aligned with the flow velocity at that point. The streamline is more mathematical and harder to interpret physically, but that's one of its strengths. Being able to define it mathematically helps us use it in analysis. And, now that we've learned about the differences between all these kinds of lines, we can make them go away by making one major flow assumption. You may remember from the last video that in the conservation equation analysis, it is very common in aerodynamics to make the steady flow assumption, meaning nothing changes in time. When this assumption is made, it turns out that path lines, streak lines, and streamlines are all the same thing. We can picture it by considering flow over an airfoil. Let's draw the velocity vectors that pass over that airfoil. In this case, the flow is not changing in time. We release a particle and follow its path. This is the path line. However, because the path line is not changing in time, if we release a series of particles at this point, they will all follow the same path. Therefore, the streak line, which connects the series of particles, is the same thing as the path line, which follows a single particle. And, by definition, the streamline is the curve who follows the velocity vectors. And since nothing is changing in time, this curve represents the path line, streak line, and streamline. So, while it's good to physically understand the difference between path lines, streak lines, and streamlines, in case you come across them in practice, you will almost never need to apply your knowledge of these differences because most basic aerodynamic flows are considered steady. Let's take the most popular of the three, the streamline, and explore it a bit further and define it mathematically. By definition, the curve of a streamline is tangent to the local velocity vector in a flow field. This means that the cross product of the curve segment ds and the velocity v is zero. However, we can come to the same end result a little bit more basically. Consider a 2D streamline plotted in X and Y. We mark a segment ds and overlay that with a velocity vector v that occupy the same spot. The slope of ds is dy over dx. and the slope of the velocity is the y component of the velocity, v, divided by the streamwise component, u. Now, we set these two slopes equal to each other and rearrange, and we get the equation for a streamline in two-dimensional flow. In three dimensions, there are three streamline equations shown here. Remember, we haven't done any complex derivation here. We have simply defined a curve that passes smoothly through the velocity field, and then defined it mathematically by equating the slopes of the two vectors. However, the streamline itself is quite powerful and is a useful tool in aerodynamics. Some useful properties of a streamline include that a flow cannot cross a streamline, much like a boundary. Consider a particle moving between two streamlines. It's much like a car driving between two lines of traffic. Although the lines of traffic are not physical barriers in the same way a wall would be, you still don't want to cross them with your car or else you'll make a mess. Streamlines act as boundaries to flow 
and in some analysis techniques, they actually replace boundaries, which we'll see in later studies. Second, if you have streamlines squeezed together or spread apart, that means that the flow velocity must have changed. Let's plot streamlines over an airfoil. We'll see that above the foil, the streamlines squeeze together, representing that the flow accelerated over the top of the foil. Another way to interpret this is if you treat the streamlines as boundaries, if the streamlines squeeze together, that means the space between the streamlines that the flow must path, pass through gets smaller. And if so, in order to keep the same mass flow rate, it has to accelerate. And third, the Bernoulli equation is generally applied along a streamline. That means, at any point on the streamline, the pressure summed with one half rho u squared stays constant. So, as you can see, there are many useful properties of streamlines that make appearances all throughout aerodynamics. Now, let's take this idea and turn it into something a little bit more complex, called the stream function. The stream function is a scalar for a 2D incompressible flow that is constructed from the velocity field and represents the set of streamlines in a flow. Unlike a typical equation, like our conservation equations from the last study, the stream function is more so built than it is derived. First, we start with the relation from above where we make the claim that the slope of ds is equal to the slope of the velocity in order to define a streamline. If we rearrange this, we get the v and dy on one side and u and dx on the other. Integrating this on either side along the streamline gives us that some function of x and y plus a constant equals some other function of x and y plus another constant. This is not meant to be exact and is left arbitrary in general on purpose. Now we define psi bar as the ratio of the two functions and a new constant that is the difference between the other two constants. And then we can write that psi bar equals c. This psi bar represents the constructed stream function. The scalar is equal to a constant along a streamline. Let's draw two streamlines, one where psi bar is equal to c1 and the other where psi bar is equal to c2. The two lines are separated by a distance delta n. Above, we were rather general and we left our constants arbitrary. However, we can try and apply physical flow features to this constructed function and give the constants some sort of meaning. Let's say that the difference between two streamlines defined as delta psi bar is equal to the mass flow rate per unit length into and out of the page, meaning you considered a third dimension, you would multiply it by the characteristic length in that third dimension. Now, the mass flow rate per unit length is rho v delta n. We can decompose the velocity in delta n into the x and y components. Let's draw it out so that it's clear. The delta n has an x component, in this case negative delta x, and a y component delta y. The velocity x and y components are u and v respectively. For mass flow rate, we multiply the velocity by its orthogonal length, so it becomes u times delta y and v times delta x. This gives us delta psi bar which we've now defined to be the mass flow between two streamlines as the sum of the x and y components. If we apply the chain rule, we can notice that from this we can get two equations. Assuming small changes, the derivative of psi bar in the y direction is the density times the u velocity and the derivative of psi bar in the x direction is the v-velocity. These are the general stream function equations for Cartesian coordinates. Let's also write them out for cylindrical coordinates, as we'll use cylindrical coordinates later in the course when considering rotating flows. Here, 
the two dimensions we consider are the angle, theta, and radius instead of x and y. And if the flow is incompressible, we can make a new definition. A new variable, psi, is defined as psi bar divided by the density. Then we can get a set of new stream function equations for an incompressible flow, written in both Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. I find the stream function a little bit difficult to talk about because it has limited use, and instead of being derived from physical flow parameters, it is more so a built function from a defined curve property. But it does have some uses. First, we realize that it is limited only to 2D and steady flows. One helpful feature of these functions is that psi represents a single scalar function that has both the u and v velocity in it. This allows us to take equations that utilize the velocity field and then boil them down into a single equation with a single function psi instead of two equations for u and v. Lastly, it is a function that represents the field of streamlines, which are very useful in aerodynamics. And, as we typically do, let's end on a practical note. As an aerodynamicist, you will find limited use for a stream function unless you're working directly with conservation equation derivations. However, flow visualization has extensive use in aerodynamics. For example, maybe you have a finite wing in a flow and you want to track the tip vortex size and position. You could apply a smoke injection device, and the stream of smoke that gets trapped in the vortex makes the vortex clearly visible. And particle tracking is quite useful for flow analysis. If you have a cylinder with water passing over it, and the water has particles in it that you can see, your eyes and camera can follow these particles and see the flow as it happens. Lastly, if you want to get an idea of the surface flow features over an object, you can do a simple and useful tuft visualization. This is just taping a lot of tiny strings to the surface of an object in a grid and watching the string behavior as the flow passes over it. Generally, the strings will point in the direction of the local flow, and if the strings violently wobble, that indicates a region of highly unsteady flow and likely separation. So, Flow visualization is a cheap and useful way to identify meaningful flow features and direct more detailed analysis. And that's it. Let's review. Today, we talked about the three main ways to visualize a flow field, path lines that follow a particle, streak lines that connect a series of particles, and streamlines that are tangent to the local velocity field. If the flow is steady, as it typically is in aerodynamics, these are all the same. We went further and mathematically defined the streamline based on its definition and discussed the key features of the streamline. And lastly, we introduced the stream function, a scalar function built from scratch that defines the streamline field. Although the stream function finds limited use in basic aerodynamics, flow visualization is widely used in practice. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.